Lucky struggled to stand up, blood running from his wounds, he had defied an order from Captain Shang and ran off to battle Buster, in his mind he wanted to save Two-Tone from Buster's claws, now he laid on the ground slowly rising. Buster I cheated death once. I can do it again. Lucky shouted with defiance toward Buster, he could hear the battles raging around, he saw his stepbrother tripod fall to Berlioz's claws, the triplets fighting themselves, family bonds were being broken in front of his eyes, he growled. You should just stay down Lucky, or should I call you Luckless? Buster taunted. Luckless fits him cause that's what he is, Twitone said in a dark uncaring voice. Lucky looked at her as he struggled to stand up. Hurry up and finish them off. Roscoe commanded to the other forces, he knew the experiments might show up and turn the tables on the outlanders, Buster looked at Lucky smirking as he did. This one's luck just ran out. It's over Lucky, you lost your girl to me, your family will be broken, I think Tones and I will repopulate your precious farm with our kids, Buster laughed as Twitone snuggled him. Over my dead body. Lucky snarled as he was on his feet, Twitone walked up to Lucky and smirked flirting with him. That's the idea Lucky, Twitone said with a evil grin before she slapped Lucky in the face, Lucky collapsed again as Buster bites on his neck, everything went black, the last thing he saw was Twitone taunting him as everything went black. Lucky was in darkness for what felt like hours till he heard a voice, Lucky. The voice was calling his name, who, who's there? Lucky asked in a strained sounding voice. His eyes opened as he blinked, the area around him was familiar, all too familiar, it was the barn, he was home. But how? Lucky struggled to sit up. The barn. How did I get home? Lucky asked himself before he saw Catpig checking on him, Catpig. How did I get here? Lucky asked her. Well you were in the barn when I found you, good thing too. But I thought you were with Patch in Hollywood helping Thunderbolt. Catpig asked. Huh. Lucky felt dizzy as Catpig spoke to him, that couldn't make sense, he was in a war, a war he knew he couldn't help win. Catpig what about the war? Our family joined it to help restore the balance, except Two-Tone, she turned on us and joined the enemy. And it's my fault. Lucky said to Catpig. Lucky did you lose your mind? Catpig asked before Two-Tone walked in on them, she gasped seeing Lucky so injured and ran to his side. Lucky. What happened? Two-Tone said in a worried voice. Lucky growled at her and turned away. What did you think happened? Your precious buster didn't get the job done, come to finish me off. Go ahead and do it Tones, kill me, you already ripped my heart out and crushed my spirit, go ahead and finish me off. Lucky told Two-Tone, the female pup was taken by all this. Catpig what's going on? Is Lucky insane? Two-Tone asked her sister, Catpig shrugged. Finish me off T-W-O-T-O-N-E. Do I T right now? Screamed Lucky. Lucky what's gotten into you? I'd never harm you or cheat on you. Why do you think I'd hurt you? Two-Tone said to Lucky. The way you sound, you sound like the way I remember you. Maybe this is heaven and Buster did kill me. Lucky sighed. Two-Tone and Catpig looked at each other then at Lucky. But you were supposed to be in Hollywood, why did you come back so wounded and invent that? Crazy story. Two-Tone asked, it was obvious no answers were coming as the two girls started out of the barn before they saw Patch walk up with Lucky behind him, Catpig am I seeing things? Is that Lucky? Two-Tone asked. Course it's me Two-Tone, how many other Dalmatians do you know have my unique horseshoe? Lucky asked her, well there is one in the barn. Two-Tone told Lucky, he laughed thinking she was joking and walked into the barn, Lucky's jaw dropped seeing a bandaged and wounded Lucky laying there. What the heck is going on here? Lucky asked, huh, alright who the heck are you? Lucky asked himself, Lucky dearly, and who the heck are you? Lucky responded, you can't be Lucky dearly, I'm Lucky dearly. Lucky said to his counterpart, we got a problem, we can't have two Lucky Dearlies on the farm. Lucky told his counterpart. You got that right, Lucky said to his counterpart. Lucky sat down looking at his counterpart, Lucky looked at himself and sighed. Glad you're not in my paws, my life has been hell, he said as JC the Dalmatian mix entered, she went to the TV to watch Glee when she saw two Luckies and almost freaked. What the heck, what's going on here, JC asked. Long story JC, Lucky answered. I heard shouting, what the heck is going on? Janine entered, the Pomeranian wasn't alone as Wizzer entered with her along with Jewel, Penny, Tripod, and Dipstick. Guess I should tell you all the truth about me and my life and the war. Lucky sat up as best he could. 
It started when Scar killed Mufasa to take over the Pride Lands, he made Simba the heir to Mufasa's kingdom go into exile while he stole the throne, Simba returned however and took back his birthright and exiled Scar along with the Outlanders, Scar swore revenge and allied himself with other animal villains such as Buster, Roscoe, DeSoto, C, M, Chief, and the other animals there against Simba, Simba recruited heroes to help fend them off such as Lady and Tramp and their children Scamp, Colette and Annette, Angel and her mother Peg, Mom and Dad, Me, Patch, Tripod, Dipstick, Rolly, Catbig, Penny, Pepper, Rebecca, and even Mooch. Lucky said, Mooch, a hero. Two-Tone said surprised. Wow I can't believe that, Mooch actually being a hero. Usher that's not our Mooch. Asked Dipstick. Lucky smiled, Dipstick was as dumb as he remembered him to be in his own reality, he continued, we also had help from Duchess and her lover Thomas O'Malley and their kitten Toulouse, Dodger, Stitch and his cousins, Bambi and the great prince of the forest, and even human heroes joined us too including Aladdin, the Greek demigod Hercules, Captain Shang, Clopin Trulfo and his dog Garner, Princess Tiana who helped with the medical emergencies, and many more, but there were human villains who joined as a separate faction having no alliance with the animal villains, Krul is one of them along with Jafar, Dr. Facilier, Hades, Maleficent, Frollo, and the other human villains, certain animal villains have allied themselves to the human villains including one of Stitch's cousins, and Copper who's loyal to the humans. Lucky told them all. And what does this have to do with you being mad at me? Well your realms me anyhow. Two-Tone asked, she was a bit afraid though. You broke my heart when you thought I broke yours with Rebecca, you joined the villains for power and became Buster's mate. I couldn't stand for it so I fought back to get you to rejoin the heroes. I failed. Lucky looked down. No way. JC said in shock, Two-Tone was stunned silent hearing that, everybody else was shocked. No way Two-Tone would do that. Jewel said with a growl. Yeah, Two-Tone was a bad girl but not that bad. Wizard said, Janine agreed with Wizard. Yeah, what she did with Mooch was minor, what you're saying is major. Janine added in. I didn't want to believe it either till I saw them myself, I became determined to free Twitone from Buster's grip. O'Malley reported on a change in Duchess other kittens Marie and Berlioz, I heard the same about one of Scamp's sisters Danielle, as well as Dodger's friends Oliver and Rita whom both went bad, I feared whatever made them go back got to Twitone in her despair. When I was dying she showed no remorse yet somehow I survived and ended up here, Lucky said to the pups. How did you survive? Asked Tripod, Penny staying close to Tripod. I haven't a clue. Lucky answered. Somehow your good luck saved your spots. Patch told Lucky. I wish it didn't, I can't stand to see Two-Tone, my Two-Tone being so evil. Lucky sighed. Lucky don't give up hope on her. Maybe one day she will see the light and return to you. Catpig told Lucky. Yeah right, she rather kill us all than be a good girl. Lucky sighed. All I want to know is who saved me and brought me here. Lucky looked around before he spotted a Doberman, Rottweiler mix, he growled Buster. He struggled to stand up. Relax, I'm not Buster. The mix said in a feminine voice. Becky, is that you? Lucky asked. Yup, in the fur. Becky answered. It's been a while Becky, but why are you here? Two-Tone asked. I saw this Lucky was about to be killed, normally I'd stay out of it but I saw how bad this situation was in their war, I transported you to safety Lucky to this farm, sorry if I caused any confusion. Becky told the pups. Understandable, but his family and allies will be searching for him. Lucky told Becky. Yeah this isn't like Disneyland you know. Two-Tone brought up the park the pups ended up in last time. I agree, no love or caring in that war. Poor Lucky he's suffered enough losing his girl and seeing his family slowly turning dark. Becky said, well I need to go back and finish settling the score. With Buster and with Twitone if need to be. Lucky struggled to stand. Not in your condition, Becky told Lucky. But, Lucky tried to protest. Becky I got an idea, let me go in his place. Lucky stood up. Lucky you crazy. You could get killed. Two-Tone said to Lucky. I know but I'm the only healthy me and besides it would look bad if he went back in his condition. Lucky told Two-Tone as he hugged her. Be careful. Two-Tone told Lucky as she licked his muzzle. Lucky nuzzled her back and smiled. I will. Lucky told her as he walked beside Becky. Ready to go. Becky asked. Yeah, ready. Lucky said as Becky engulfed herself and Lucky in a bright glow, moments later both were gone. Lucky blinked as he and Becky stood on Pride Rock which overlooked the Pride Lands, the heroes camp was below them. Where are we? Lucky asked. Pride Rock, the heroes base is below us. You best mingle in with them, when your counterpart is healed I'll teleport him here, but I must go now since my power is limited here. Becky told Lucky, he nodded and headed down into the camp as Becky vanished. Lucky looked around just as Cadpig approached him. Lucky, you had us all worried sick. 
Cadpig wagged seeing her brother. Sorry about that Cadpig, I had to go see Two-Tone. Lucky answered her, you know that was insubordination right? Captain Shang walked up, Mushu the dragon sat on his shoulder. Yeah kid, you looking to get killed? Mushu asked Lucky with a glare. Look I love Two-Tone and I had to do something, how's Tripod? Lucky asked. Stable thank goodness Colette and Annette got him back to Tiana in time, Berlioz did a number on him, and we learned their sister Danielle sided with the Outlanders. Shang said, does Scamp know? Lucky asked. He doesn't it hurt him bad, Angel's still with Patch and Rebecca told me Penny doesn't want them to be together. Catpig told Lucky. Where's Penny at? Lucky asked. Captured, Mom and Dad want to mount a rescue attempt. Catpig said to Lucky. Hem, Captain I might have a plan. Lucky looked at Shang. Lucky I should have you thrown in lockdown but your parents warned me you were stubborn. But I also heard you're good with plans. What did you have in mind? Shang asked. We capture Two-Tone, if they're brainwashing her then we can use her to find a way to break it, and hopefully break the control on Danielle, Berlioz, and Marie. Lucky said, hem, we do have some magic users here. We'll see what we can do. Shang went off to call a meeting. Capture Two-Tone. Lucky what are you thinking? Buster will counter-strike us if we tried. Cadpig said with concern. I know but Two-Tone shouldn't be this way and I'm going to find out why. Lucky headed off after Shang. Cadpig headed off to inform Pepper, Patch, and Mooch. Meanwhile Lucky followed Shang to a meeting place, Simba sat alongside Nala as well as Aladdin, Genie, and Hercules. Lucky here has a plan, as we know several animals on the Outlander's side have not always been evil but yet they have become so, we need to find out the reason why. Shang stated, Simba think the same happened to our daughter Kiara. Nala asked Simba, I'd stake my reign as king of the Pride Lands on it. Simba said, a growl escaped his muzzle as thoughts of Scar and Zira poisoning Kiara's mind with lies came to mind. Yeah, Iago's been spying there and he's seen strange stuff happening there. I'm beginning to wonder, if magic is being involved. Aladdin spoke up, I'm in agreement with Aladdin. I've had experience with magic and enchantment, magic was the cause of my current form. The beast spoke up, beast is right about one thing, if magic is behind this then the only way to counter it is with magic of our own. Genie spoke up, but we don't have enough spellcasters other than Genie and Merlin. Shang said to them, but we can't let them taint Two-Tone with the same darkness they did Marie and the others. Lucky said with concern, yeah, that goes for Oliver and Rita too. Dodger walked up, cause I know he and Rita weren't evil last I saw him in New York. He said to the others, this is bizarre. Lucky how would we go about your plan? Asked Hercules, simple, Buster and Two-Tone think I'm dead, wait till they see me alive. I can lead them away from the other Outlanders long enough for you guys to grab Two-Tone. And make a run back to the Pride Lands. Lucky explained. Sounds like a plan. Aladdin said. Yes, we need to gather a group of Soliders willing to join this strike. Simba said. I'm in. A voice echoed. All heads turned to see Scamp walk in. Scamp. Are you sure? Simba asked. Positive. Lucky doesn't deserve to lose his girl like I lost mine. Scamp said. Lucky smiled. Thanks Scamp. I'll need at least a few of my siblings as well as some of Stitch's family. Lucky told Scamp whom nodded. Lucky went to gather his siblings. Lucky what's up? Patch asked. Shang agreed to my plan to save Two-Tone. Lucky told him. You're crazy, she loves Buster now and loves being evil Lucky. Dunno if you're willing to accept that. Mooch told Lucky. Not from what I heard from the human heroes, Dodger and I agree something is controlling her and his friends. Lucky explained. Lucky, Buster almost killed ye, don't go back there. Rebecca told Lucky. Sorry Rebecca, but I have to. To save the girl I love. Lucky told Rebecca as he went to gather the experiments. Soon Lucky's group was assembled as they headed off toward the Outlander territory. Meanwhile Twitone was busy on patrol with Marie, the two walked along the border. Twitone grumbled a bit stupid Scar, why do I have to go on patrol? She complained. Don't ask me, I'd rather be snuggling with Oliver right now. Marie sighed. Yeah, Buster too. Twitone sighed too. Don't worry, we shouldn't have any trouble tonight. Marie said before she caught sight of Lucky. Hey isn't that one of your brothers? Marie asked. One of my ex-brothers since I disowned the dearly name when I went stree. Twitone froze, it was Lucky. No way. Buster killed him. She yelled. Marie hissed as her claws were showing. I'll finish what he started. Marie went after Lucky but as she tried to claw him Lucky vanished, huh? Marie looked around confused, hidden behind the bushes was the experiment dupe whom had cloned Lucky then removed the clone, Lucky smirked as Twitone and Marie looked around. Is it his ghost? Twitone asked. No way, something isn't right here. 
Stay here Twitone, I'll go look. Marie walked off. Twitone remained unaware Lucky was still in the area. Lucky motioned towards Scamp and Stitch to wait as he emerged from the bushes. Now what is a sweet little Dalmatian puppy like you doing in a place like this? Lucky taunted. I don't know how you pulled that trick Lucky but I'll finish what Buster started. Twitone growled as she ran after. Lucky, Lucky ran ahead of Twitone as he lead her right to the experiments, he slipped something into his ears as he ran past as if it was a signal, as he ran the experiment known as Bell appeared in front of Twitone, the Dalmatian stopped confused as Bell suddenly let out a loud shriek causing Twitone to yelp out in pain clutching her ears, Lucky walked up sporting earplugs as he did so. The experiment link also appeared as well. Okay guys let's take her. Lucky told the experiments as he and Scamp grabbed Twitone and carried her back to the Pride Lands, the experiments acted as backup just as Buster, Roscoe, DeSoto, Cash, and Dixie rushed out. Stop them. They're taking my mate. Buster yelled. The dogs ran after the experiments but the five dogs ended up slipping on ice, Slushy had frozen the ground on the dogs making them slip. Get off me. Snarled DeSoto as he shoved Cash off of him, Dixie stood up growling. They got away. Dixie yelled. And they took my tones with them. Buster snarled. Well we got one of theirs, I got a plan. Cash told Buster. The dogs went back to the Outlands. Meanwhile Lucky and Scamp returned with Twitone in their arms, she was still disoriented from Belle's shriek. Pongo and Perdita sighed in relief seeing their daughter safe as they lead her to lock down and placed her in a cage. Lucky shut the door and locked it. Hate to do that to you Twitone, but you need to be in here. Lucky told Twitone. Huh, wah, how did I? Now I remember. How did you survive? Twitone growled at Lucky. Surprised you even care. Lucky said to Two-Tone as Experiment 624 aka Angel walked up, the experiment whom chose to use her experiment name to avoid confusion with Angel, Peg's daughter, the experiment held a blue collar in her paws. Found this, Mega think it belonged to somebody, 624 handed the collar over to Lucky. Twitone's collar. Lucky said, thanks 624. He thanked the experiment as she left. Lucky stared at the collar as he looked at Twitone in the cage. You took it off, after how you licked Roger's face being so happy to have it, you discarded it like garbage. Lucky growled. Of course, I'm a street dog you idiot. Buster helped me get that slave collar off me so I can be free. Twitone snapped at Lucky. You're a blind fool, Buster doesn't love you for who you are. Lucky told Twitone as he walked away still holding her collar. Twitone snarled and barked at Lucky wanting to get at him for insulting Buster. Mooch walked up to Lucky. You didn't have to set her off the deep end Lucky. Mooch told Lucky. Surprised you still cared about her Mooch. Lucky looked at Mooch. Did she seriously call her collar a slave collar? I mean I know Twitone was a bad girl but that's beyond bad, even past anything I used to do with her. Mooch said worried. I heard magic is being used, I'm afraid of magic getting to me, if I leave and join a villain faction have Scamp kill me. Lucky said to Mooch. Scamp. Come on Lucky, you aren't the type to go evil. Mooch told Lucky. I know but TT did and she wasn't evil to begin with. Same with Scamp's sister Danielle, or Dodger's friends Oliver and Rita, or Duchess Kittens Marie and Berlioz. Something stinks here and I'm willing to find out what it is. Lucky said with determination. Well that's your opinion Lucky, meantime I'm gonna hang out with Ruben. Mooch headed off, Lucky decided to follow and think of ideas on how to help Twitone. He too headed to the mess hall where Reuben was busy making sandwiches, Jumba was also there along with Agent Pleakley, Stitch, 624, and Sparky. Hem this is unforeseen. Not expecting this at all. Jumba was on his computer. What is it Jumba? Pleakley asked. 624's song can affect 625 and 626. Jumba announced. Naga. Mega not hurt my boojiboo. 624 cried out. Relax 624, if you sing song, 625 and 626 are immune but if song is distorted or sung in different key they will be. Jumba said, now how do y'all like dat, if hotcakes here sings her song I go back to being da bad guy. Ruben said as he munched on a sandwich. Well unsure if it will work though 625 but not want to risk it. Jumba told Ruben, ah oh, well suit yourself. Ruben munched on his sandwich some more. Dr. Jukiba. Lucky said to Jumba. Ah, little spotted earth creature. What can Jumba do for you? Jumba asked. How does 624's siren song work? Lucky asked. Well if anybody whom was previously evil heard it they revert to evil ways, Jumba is living proof of that. Jumba said with a laugh. But if siren song is sung backwards, evil person turns good. Jumba told Lucky. Why you ask? He asked. 
because I think that's the key to helping Twitone remember who she really is. Lucky told Joomba, Miga thinks so too, Boojiboo go with Puppy and help his Boojiboo. Stitch asked 624. Okay Stitch, Miga be back soon, 624 said as she licked Stitch's head. Hey, get a room you too. Ruben jokingly said, 624 headed off with Lucky back to lockdown. 624 if it goes the way I think it will Twitone will be back to normal. Lucky told 624 whom nodded, the two arrived at the cage Twitone was inside, she glared at them darkly. Lucky let me out of here. Twitone snarled at Lucky. Okay 624 give it all you got. Lucky told the experiment, 624 nodded and approached the cage. A could at mut Allen no tagin, hey tu mina de gioti my h c a tuka, 624 sang softly as her siren song echoed in reverse, Twitone stared at 624 and lucky as she heard the song, she blinked a few times as her dark blue eyes seemed to clear up, she shook her head. L. Lucky, what am I doing in this cage? Twitone asked. It worked. Lucky said happily. Is that my? Lucky what's going on? Twitone asked fear gripping her. I'll explain later. Lucky went to open the cage before he saw Shang walk up. Lucky what are you doing? Shang asked. I think he's flipped his lid, Mushu said to Shang. Number, 624 brought Twitone back from being evil captain. Lucky said happily. Evil. Me. Twitone slumped in the back of her cage. It's a long story. Lucky tossed Twitone her collar. Twitone strapped it around her neck again. You joined the war on the animal villain's side and got together with Buster. Lucky explained to Twitone, she gasped in shock. Lucky, last thing I remember on the farm was running away to join the war, I felt something prick the back of my neck and everything went black till now. Twitone responded, I see, I wonder if this will work on the others. Shang asked, not no, Miga unsure, 624 answered. We can try, Lucky said before Lady ran up. We got trouble, Buster's coming and he's not alone. Lady told Shang, he's after me isn't he? Twitone asked. Knowing Buster he probably is, don't worry I'll protect you. Lucky told Twitone. Thanks Lucky. Twitone wagged as she stepped out of the cage. But what if I go bad again? She asked with concern. That won't happen Twitone, I won't allow it. Lucky told Twitone as he held her paws. At the border of the Pride Lands Buster stood waiting, alongside him where Roscoe and DeSoto, Rita, Dixie, Oliver, Marie, and Berlioz stood by as well, Marie holding Penny by the collar. Sure this will work. Buster asked. Yeah, we'll get your cat lover girlfriend back. DeSoto snorted. Hey, she's no cat lover. She's a junkyard dog now. Buster looked at DeSoto. Here they come now. Chief spoke up as the heroes arrived. No sign of Scar or Zira. What is your business here? Simba asked. My mate, release Twitone or else Penny here will suffer. Buster answered. You won't get away with this. Pongo growled. Easy Pongo, let me handle this. Tramp approached his old friend. Buster just let the puppy go, she has nothing to do with you, he said in a calm voice. Not till Tones is present and goes back with me. Buster replied, I will not let my daughter go back. Perdita growled, too bad, she made her choice to join us, she's one of us till she dies. Roscoe spoke coldly to Perdita, I will not let you harm a strand of fur on my daughter. Perdita growled, Roscoe grinned at the Dalmatian being defiant, he liked that as he stared at her. The other dogs all glared as Lucky and Twitone walked over with 624 following them. Tones, good to see you unharmed. Buster grinned. Buster. Twitone looked at Buster. Yes, Tones. Buster asked her. Lucky told me the truth, you don't love me for who I am. You only want my body. I'll never go back with you. Twitone barked at Buster. The Doberman mix was caught off his guard. I knew that cat lover couldn't be trusted. I say kill her now. DeSoto growled glaring at Twitone. DeSoto no. They brainwashed Tones into being on their side. Buster shouted. No, Miga freed her, she not your boo anymore. 624 growled at Buster, her claws showing, the female experiment was ready for a fight. Marie and Berlioz held their claws toward Penny threatening her life. Twitone surrender to us or else your sister dies. Marie hissed at Twitone. Lucky. Twitone turned to Lucky. They have a point. Lucky told Twitone. She looked at Lucky in surprise but knew he had a plan, whatever that plan was it needed to be done now before she could be taken and brainwashed again. Rebecca whom was watching held the experiment hunka hunka in her paw. She lunged at Lucky ready to stab him with the captive bird experiment in order for him to fall in love with her. Lucky sidestepped Rebecca as she lunged at Buster sticking him with hunka hunka. Oof. Rebecca looked up to see Buster looking right at her, or not the one I was after. Rebecca growled at Buster. No, but I want you as my junkyard queen, Buster grinned at Rebecca. 
Wah, but AHM not a junkyard dog. Rebecca backed off as Buster went after her, he had fallen in love with Rebecca thanks to Hunka Hunka's effect. Lucky how did you know? Twitone asked him. Simple, I took a peek into Dr. Jukiba's computer, I knew Rebecca was desperate to make me love her and she'd use Hunka Hunka to do it, let's just say I anticipated her. Lucky wagged, the other Outlander dogs grew confused over Buster's actions as he now wanted Rebecca instead of Twitone. Roscoe, what the heck is wrong with Buster? DeSoto asked confused. He's in love pal, I suggest you guys beat it before things get ugly. Dodger shouted. Penny took advantage and stomped Marie hard in the foot paw. Marie howled in pain as Penny ran. Berlioz ran after Penny only for Patch to deck the black kitten in the face. Thanks Patch. Penny said, she was happy to be back with her family. Roscoe, your bargaining chip is gone, I suggest you leave now before we splatter the pride lands with your blood. Simba growled. Roscoe knew the Lion King meant business. You win for now. Retreat everybody. Roscoe ran off with DeSoto behind him, the others followed, Buster followed dragging Rebecca with him. Shouldn't we go help her? Twitone asked. Not nah, they make a cute couple. Lucky said with a smirk. The heroes returned to camp luckily without injuries or anything bad happening. Later on Lucky and Twitone took a walk around the Pride Lands. They happened across Angel and Patch. Lucky I see you're in high spirits. Angel said wagging a bit. Sure am. Twitone's one of us now and I'm glad for that. Lucky told Angel. Yeah, all that time you acted like jerks to us and it was because you were concerned. Angel said. Yeah, sorry about that. Lucky apologized. I'm surprised so many of us joined the war. I hope one day it will end and we can all go back home to our daily lives before the war began. Twitone said as she looked at Lucky, she nuzzled him happily. Lucky blushed a bit as Twitone nuzzled him. That night Lucky stepped out of his tent, he headed toward Pride Rock and sat waiting, as he did Becky appeared beside him, you surely did some smart work here, your counterpart is healed up. Becky told Lucky, cool, he'll be happy to know Twitone is safe now and he won't have to worry about Rebecca unless somebody splashes water on Buster's face. Lucky said, I see, ready to return. Becky asked, yeah, I kinda miss my home. Lucky said as he and Becky vanished from the rock. Lucky and Becky arrived back on the farm, Lucky was in the barn watching Thunderbolt as he saw his counterpart and Becky walk up. Welcome back, man I forgot how good Thunderbolt was. Lucky said sighing a bit, he felt a bit homesick and sighed. Thanks, oh I took care of two birds with one stone. Lucky told his counterpart. Really? Lucky asked. Yeah, Twitone is now a part of the Pridelanders, I broke her free of the Outlanders' control, I'm sure Dodger and O'Malley will ask 624 to help them with their friends and family on the evil side. Lucky wagged his tail. Lucky smiled happily for the first time. We better get you back to Pride Rock, your family and friends need you. Becky told Lucky. Okay, let's go home, Lucky said before looking at his counterpart. Thanks, I owe you one. Lucky told his counterpart. Ah no problem, you would have done the same for me and my two-tone. Lucky wagged as Becky and the other Lucky vanished back to the Pride Lands, Lucky went to where two-tone was asleep at and licked her cheek, I love you TT, and I'll never let anything happen to you as long as I live, seeing all that in the war opened my eyes to see how much you really mean how much to me is not just somebody I know but the girl I love and cherish. Lucky told her, two-tone woke up and looked at Lucky and smiled at him. That's so sweet, two-tone said to Lucky as she licked his face. Lucky smiled and snuggled with her as they fell asleep cuddled together. End.